I thought I should remake the video of building this little log cabin. The old video had no narration, just some music that I think some people didn't really care for very much. So I thought it'd be a good time after eight years to redo that video, to narrate it, talk about some of the construction things that I did building the cabin and even some mistakes that I made when building it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I used an LT15 wood miser sawmill to mill the logs. The logs are milled seven inches thick and the top and bottom surfaces are also milled, but I, I used a, a variable height. So to achieve that, I actually moved the saw head up and down slightly as I was going down the log making those top and bottom cuts. So the height varies slightly. And I did that to make the cabin look a little more natural, more rustic. I didn't want it to have all very uniform gap openings. Since this cabin was going to be a very small and portable cabin, I used very minimal temporary type foundation. I constructed a real simple frame to make a 11 foot by 15 foot to match the cabin footprint. And I placed that out on the ground and used that to locate the corners using stones in a couple of places. And on the higher side, I had to build a, a bit of a pier with a short column. After the first four logs were put down, making up the first course, I installed the floor joists, which are just two by eight rough sawn boards fastened at the ends to the side logs. And here I used ledger boards to support those joists. Of course, to notch the logs, I used the log dovetail jigs and a chainsaw to make the cuts. Here you can see the saw spacers that attach to the saw bar, keep the saw from cutting into the jigs. Uh, the jigs do make it a very fast to cut all the notches and they, they work on logs that are variable height like we have here. So by using one set of jigs, I was able to cut all the notches for this cabin. And even though the log height varies, the center to center vertical spacing of the logs is constant. The exterior faces of the logs were left rough sawn. For the interior, I used an electric hand planer to smooth the logs first and then also to gouge the logs to give a little bit of a hand hewn look. The top two side logs, they extend beyond the front wall to make the overhang for the porch. So in order to make those notches, I had to remove the end plate off the dovetail jig so the jig could slide down the log. Then I fastened it there and was able to make just several plunge cuts with the chainsaw and then clean out the excess. As you can see, when the logs were first milled, they were a whitish yellow color. And of course, this is lodgepole pine. So I wanted a, a darker, more rustic look, an aged look. And I found a really good way to do that, a good trick to use. I used the Tahoma Brown stain that you can get at Home Depot. And the stain, of course, is a mixture of pigment and then the solvent. And if the stain sits in the can for a long period of time, the pigment will kind of settle to the bottom. And of course, most people will mix up the stain thoroughly before using it. If you do that, you get a very uniform color throughout. Well, I didn't want a uniform color, so I didn't mix the stain. Instead, I put down an initial coat just using the unmixed upper portion of the can, which was a fairly light coat and mostly with the solvent oils and preservatives without the pigment. And then after I got that coat on, I used the lower portion of the can that was really heavily pigmented and applied streaks to the logs and just kind of randomly shaded the logs, kind of like you would do maybe a gel stain kind of an application. And having that multicolored tone really made the cabin have that aged look immediately. It's the first time I've used that technique, um, but since then I've used that on other buildings as well. It's really a good way to 
to get an aged barn wood look using new wood. To fill the gaps between the logs, I used a synthetic chinking product. The first step in this process is to apply the foam backer rod. And since the log gap varies, I had to use various sizes of backer rod. And for the larger gaps, maybe an inch and a half or better, I didn't have backer rod that big, so I, I bought pipe insulation, which comes in larger sizes, and used that in those bigger areas. I will say that it's much more time consuming and expensive to chink bigger gaps. So when possible, it's, it's a good idea to try to keep the gaps to a minimum to save a lot of time and money. I do recommend at least a quarter, maybe a half inch for a cabin like this for a minimum size gap. After the backer rod is installed, the next step is to apply the chinking, placing the approximately the right volume in the, in the gap, but using the applicator just to get the material in place. Later we'll follow that up with a misting of water and a small trowel or putty knife is used to smooth out that chinking and, and seal it, pressing it up to the upper log and down to the lower log to make a nice watertight seal. Any excess material can be wiped off the log with a wet cloth. I held off on installing the tongue and groove subflooring until I was quite a bit further along with the cabin to minimize the amount of time it was exposed to rain and weather. These logs were beetle killed and were standing dead for several years before they were even harvested. So they're really bone dry. This climate in Montana is a very dry climate, so the wood was thoroughly dry uh, by the time I used it. So I simply just framed the openings for the window and the door and rigidly attached the log ends to those frames. Now for using green logs that are going to settle more, uh, often people use some method of accommodating that log shrinkage so that the log ends aren't held up by the frames and so those log ends can slide downward as the cabin settles. So here's one detail that shows a method of doing that. There are other methods of doing it as well. You can see too that I beveled the edges of the logs where they attach to these frames and that will allow me later to come in and chink completely around the perimeter of the frame and to seal that. Otherwise, you end up with a very narrow crack where the log butts into the frame and it, you can't really effectively seal that. Also, using this method, I had a nice finished look that didn't require any kind of exterior trim around those frames. For the roof framing, I simply used rough sawn 2x6 rafters and a 3x8 ridge. I installed the roof framing and then I finished out the gable logs and since they're not notched you have to have some internal support between those that's hidden behind the chinking so those are stacked and fastened together with long lag screws and then trimmed to match the slope of the roof on top of the rafters I used one by six rough sawn boards for sheathing and I made a big mistake here. You may have seen another video about that, but I, I did not put any kind of roofing underlayment under the cedar shingles, and that was a big mistake. So if you do this, make sure you put underlayment under any of your roofing products, cedar shingles or tar shingles, whatever. So I, ultimately I ended up covering this later with the metal roofing. I made a simple door and a couple of windows just using rough sawn lumber and individual glass panes, single pane windows.
For the interior, I installed a Yodel 602 wood stove with a synthetic stone surround. I built a small cabinet next to that and, and also put in some rustic furniture initially, which made for a nice little pioneer cabin look. Eventually though, I did sell that property and ultimately ended up living in the little cabin for four years in three different locations. Eventually I installed a 12 volt solar power system, TV, internet and even a shower. And of course an outhouse is a must have to live off grid in a cabin like this. The final move of the cabin to our new land. A crane made the job really easy and it was a really a beautiful fall day. The new land is 10 acres and has a lot of good building locations. Had a beautiful creek and this particular spot right here was well suited for the small cabin. If you like this video, you'll want to watch a couple of other videos I have about this cabin and how I lived in it for four years. I'll put links to those videos in the description below.